Do you remember once upon a time when we used to listen to music in our car? It was so easy. You just turned on the stereo. But these days, the music comes from our phones. And so we're forever trying to connect our phones to the car stereo. We are begging our stereo, please discover my phone. We're begging our phone, please pair with my stereo. But when you finally get it working, that's when my wife jumps in the car. Now her phone kicks off my phone from the stereo. And we're now arguing over whose phone we're actually listening to. This is coming from your phone. No, this is coming from your phone. And I'm thinking, oh, when did life get this hard? No wonder we're anxious. And there's so many things that make us anxious. So our question today is this, how can I escape anxiety? And it's a great question because right now, anxiety is at epidemic highs in Australia. Only a few years ago, the number one reason why an Australian would see their family GP, their family doctor, would be for the common cold. But today, these days, the number one reason an Australian will visit their family doctor is for anxiety, stress or depression. Anxiety is also at disproportionate highs in the Western world compared to the rest of the world, which is astounding because if you could pick any time, anywhere to be alive, it would be right now because we live longer, we own more things, we have free Wi-Fi in McDonald's, but somehow we're more anxious than ever before. And anxiety is at understandable highs. We just had a COVID global pandemic where anxiety levels all around were higher than normal and understandably so. So our question today is this, how can I escape anxiety? Well, g'day, my name is Sam Chan. I work part-time as a medical doctor. The rest of the time I work in Christian ministry with City Bible Forum. Thank you so much for having me here today to speak to you, to try to answer this question, how can I escape anxiety? And I'm gonna to try to answer this question by seeing mental fitness as a spectrum. Mental fitness isn't something binary, you have it or you don't have it. Mental fitness is on a spectrum in the same way that physical fitness is on a spectrum. And in the same way that you can be physically fit and still break down and become unwell, we too can still have mental fitness and yet break down and become unwell. But if we can fill our mental fitness tank, it makes it less likely that we will break down. But if we empty our mental fitness tank, well, it probably makes it more likely we might break down. So I'm gonna to try to answer this question. How can we escape anxiety with two parts in this talk? In the first part of the talk, we'll look at things that empty our mental fitness tank. And in the second half of the talk, we'll look at things that can fill our mental fitness tank. So let's begin. What are some things that might empty our mental fitness tank? And here I suggest at least three things. Number one, the first thing that might empty our mental fitness tank is this. We live in a culture of meritocracy and perfectionism. A few years ago, I ran in the Sydney Marathon, a 42 kilometer race through the streets of Sydney, and there are thousands of runners. But when the race started, I thought, you know, I should go to the toilet, just, just in case. And it's early in the race, I've got plenty of time to catch up. But when I came out of the toilets, there was no one around me. I was by myself. So I went to one of the race officials and I said, am I coming last in the race? And he looked at me horrified. He saw the number on my bib and he said, are you in the race? I said, yes, I'm in the race. And he said, you are coming last, dead last. There's no one in front of you for miles. And I thought, wow, I am the guy coming last in the Sydney Marathon. That's not easy to do because there are thousands and thousands of runners, but I am the guy coming last. 
They should give me a trophy for coming last. But they didn't give me a trophy. And that's because we live in a culture of meritocracy, where we have to earn our trophies. We have to earn our success. And so we have to earn our qualifications. We have to earn our job. We have to earn our wealth and possessions. And more than that, we're told that we can be anything we want to be as long as we believe and try hard enough. And so we should be able to bake the perfect sourdough. We should have the perfect body. We should have the perfect holiday. We should have the perfect job. We should have the perfect family. In fact, we ourselves should be perfect. And if we're not perfect, that just means we didn't try hard enough and we failed. The second thing that can empty our mental fitness tank is this. FOMO. The fear of missing out. This feeling that somewhere, somehow out there is something I'm missing out on. And we know that feeling around New Year's Eve when people invite us to their parties and we're thinking, well, which party should I go to? Because I don't want to be caught out at the boring party. And so we keep searching, looking for the perfect party, but never finding it. This is Sarah Wilson. She was the editor behind the successful Cosmo magazine. She was behind the successful I Quit Sugar campaign. She has been successful in every area of her life, but she still struggles with anxiety. So she wrote this book, First We Make the Beast Beautiful, to explain what it's like to struggle with anxiety. And she says it's this feeling of restlessness where you're always wandering, always searching. She says, you know how you see a dog circling a cushion, always looking for the perfect spot to settle down, but never finding it. She says, that's what it's like to struggle with anxiety. And maybe that's us too. That's why we're never present. We're always worried that out there, somewhere, somehow, someone is better than what's going on in front of me right now. And so we're always searching. And even if we find what we're looking for, there's no guarantee that that is what we're looking for. This is Jill Stark. She wrote this book, Happy Never After, to describe what happened to her when she wrote her previous book, which became a bestseller. And when it became a bestseller, it sent her into a spiral of depression. And apparently this is really common with authors because they launch into this project where they're where they pour their lives into writing a book, they launch the book, the book is a success, and it leads to this feeling of emptiness. They climb the mountain, but there's nothing there. The third thing that might empty our mental fitness tank is this. Our lives are maxed out. This is a nose hair wax kit, yes, it's a thing now. And I'm thinking, oh, as if my life wasn't busy enough already. Here's one more thing I need to do to get ready in the morning. My wife and I have three young boys and we have fallen into the parent trap. We promised ourselves it wouldn't happen, but it has happened. And this is what the parent trap is for us. And let me see if I can get it right. Monday night is martial arts night. Tuesday night is clarinet lessons. Wednesday night is football training. Thursday is band. Friday is youth group. And Saturday is Saturday sports. And even then, some well-meaning parent will say to us, your kids aren't doing Chinese. I'm sorry, but your kids need to do a foreign language. Otherwise, the two parts of the brain won't talk to each other and your kids won't be smart. And someone else will say, your kids aren't doing the piano. I'm sorry, but the clarinet is not a real instrument. The piano is a real instrument because it's got two clefs. And so now two hands are independent from each other. And again, the two parts of the brain will talk to each other. And I'm thinking, whoa, 
our lives are maxed out and even then we don't feel like we're doing enough. When I was a junior doctor working in one of the largest major hospitals in Sydney, this is what a mobile phone looked like. It was bigger and heavier than a brick, than a car battery. And because it was so big and awkward and bulky and heavy, in our whole department, only one doctor got to take home the mobile phone. And that meant the rest of us went home from work uncontactable. Only one doctor was contactable after hours. But these days, we all have a mobile phone. We're all contactable. We're all on call 24 hours a day. And it's more than that. Because these days, we work from home, or as someone said, no, we live at work. More than that, these days, both partners have to work. And so now we have to juggle who's doing the school drop-off, who's doing the school pickup, who's doing daycare drop-off, who's doing daycare pickup. Our lives are maxed out. And sometimes we do more things on the weekend so that by the time we hit Monday, we're exhausted from the weekend, only to have to start it all over again. Whew, our mental fitness tanks are empty. So what are some things we can do to fill our mental fitness tanks? Well, we've just heard a story from the Bible. It's a story of Mary and Martha, two sisters who invite Jesus back to their home to, to cook him a meal. Now, I love to search the internet to imagine what would Jesus look like if he was around today. And I try to find a picture of what I think Jesus would look like if he was here today. This is the picture I'm going with because we know that Jesus was not Anglo. He was not white. Maybe he was a little bit podgy because the Bible says he did like to eat and drink. He was, he was also cutting edge, iconoclastic, and countercultural. So Mary and Martha, they invite Jesus back to their home for a meal. And Martha is stressed out. She's running around trying to make the place perfect, to put on the perfect meal. But Mary instead is chilled. She's present. She's feasting on the words of Jesus. She's in the moment. But this makes Martha all the more stressed. And she says to Jesus, say something. So what can we learn from this story? What things can we do to fill our mental fitness tank? Well, here I suggest at least four things. Number one, it doesn't have to be perfect. I love the way that children draw. But look at it. What do we like about this drawing? There's nothing accurate about this drawing. This, I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but this is not what a human being looks like. And yet children have so much fun when they draw. So I said to my minister, Andrew Barsley, who used to be a high school arts teacher, I said to him, what is going on? How come children can draw like this, but us, but us grown-ups cannot draw like this? And Andrew Barsley told me that as grown-ups, we lose playfulness and we replace it instead with literalism and perfectionism. We're trying to draw an accurate, perfect drawing. This is Will Storr. He's a UK writer. He's not a Christian. He's written this book that I love. It's called Selfie. And in this book, Will Storr tries to answer the question, well, why is anxiety, stress and depression at unprecedented, disproportionate highs in the Western world compared to the rest of the world? And his answer is this. In the Western world, we have created a culture of self-perfectionism. Because in the Western world, we have this unchallenged truth that says this. I am perfect. 
and you need to accept me for who I am. Which sounds like a great saying, but the unintended negative consequence of this has been it's created a culture of self-perfectionism because now we have to prove we're perfect to others and to ourselves and this is impossible and unsustainable but and but, and, and we see this in the story of Mary and Martha because Martha is running around trying to put on the perfect dinner for Jesus but in the New Testament Jesus comes and flips this around because in the New Testament the truth claim is this Jesus is perfect so I don't need to be perfect so I don't need to prove I'm perfect because Jesus accepts me just the way I am and this is what Mary discovers and this is why she can be chilled and present and in the moment because she doesn't have to prove she's perfect Jesus is perfect and Jesus accepts her just the way she is the second thing that we can do to fill our mental fitness tank is this I don't need to be in control I only need to control what I can control and trust Jesus with the rest my wife is a great driver when she's behind the wheel she's safe she knows where she's going she's competent she's confident but I'm a terrible passenger when my wife is driving I'm forever freaking out thinking oh why are you going this way I would have gone this way what are you doing in this lane you need to be in this lane ah oh, what are you doing but I need to relax and know that my wife has the will, she is in control, trust her, and I just need to control what I can control. Put on your seatbelt, play with a visor, and trust her with the rest. In life, we really only have three choices. Choice number one, no one is in control, the universe is out of control, nothing happens for a reason no one is behind the wheel and this can be stressful so we have choice number two I need to be behind the wheel I need to be in control of everything and this can be stressful as well but we have a third choice God is in control he's got the wheel trust him with that and we ourselves just be responsible for what we can control and if you think about it, this is a very wise position to take in life because almost everything that has a major determining factor on the outcome and course of our life, we can't control. Think about it. We couldn't choose what family we got born into. We couldn't choose what country we grew up in. We couldn't choose what schools our parents sent us to. We couldn't control what exams, uh, we couldn't control what questions came up in our exams. We couldn't control the financial markets. We can't control the health of our parents. And yet all of these things have major determining, they, they are major determining factors on the outcome of our life but if we can trust that God has them under control and I only need to control what I can control then we can discover a peace and a rest that comes in knowing Jesus the third thing we can do is this practice healthy habits here I learned a lot from a podcast I listened to put out by City Bible Forum called bigger questions and in this episode they interviewed Dr. Jenny George and asked her this question how can I be mentally fit and one of the things that Dr. Jenny George suggested was we can practice healthy habits and she puts out a list of healthy habits and they include things like sleep, exercise, mindfulness, outdoors, giving, thankfulness, 
having purpose and meaning, forgiveness and prayer. And we can look at that list and go, yeah, yeah, I mean, that's just common sense. And this is similar to what many people, both Christian and non-Christians, are saying that, that we can practice. But think about it. This list makes much more sense. In fact, this list only makes sense if there's a loving, powerful God behind the universe. Have a look at this list again and see how it makes sense if there's a God. Sleep. Well, that makes sense because we have a God who himself rested. We have a God who's programmed a rhythm of rest into us and his creation. Exercise is important because the physical universe matters to God. And it matters so much, so much that Jesus himself took on physical body because the physical world matters to God. Mindfulness. Well, because we have been created to be present with God. Outdoors. Well, that makes sense because we have a God who created and programmed beauty into his universe. Giving. Well, this only makes sense if there's a giving God behind the universe who has programmed generosity, grace, and giving into the DNA, DNA of us and the universe. Thankfulness. Everyone says, oh, thankfulness is really important. But think about it. This only makes sense if there's a God to thank. Thankfulness makes no sense if this universe is impersonal, made up of only atoms and molecules. But if there's a loving, personal God behind the universe, then of course we can be thankful. Purpose and meaning. Everyone is saying, hey, we need purpose and meaning. But again, this only makes sense if there's a design behind this universe. If there's a bigger story than just our own story to live for, this only makes sense if there's a designer God with a God story for us. Forgiveness. Everyone is saying, hey, we need forgiveness. But think about it. How can we have forgiveness if no one forgives? Right now, no matter how many times you say sorry, your tribe won't forgive you, society won't forgive you, we won't forgive ourselves. But if there's a God who forgives, who sends his son Jesus to die for us, who now lives for us and we can live for him, well, we too can forgive. And prayer. Everyone's saying, oh, prayer is so good. But think about it. Prayer cannot work if this is only an impersonal universe of atoms and molecules, prayer only works because there's a loving, powerful God behind the universe. The fourth thing we can do to fill our mental fitness tank is this. To know what is of ultimate value in our life. And we all know this trick. When we travel, we carry a fake wallet so that when someone robs us, we give them the fake wallet and we can relax because we know that what is of true value is hidden away somewhere else. Many years ago, I lent my brother my car and he crashed it. And when he rang me up to tell me, I wanted to ask, how's my car? Is my car all right? But of course, I did the wise thing and I asked, how are you? Because my brother is of ultimate value to me. My car is of no value to me. Cars come and go, but my brother is of true value to me. And it's the same for us. Where is our ultimate value? Jobs come and go, possessions come and go, friends come and go, but Jesus will always be with us. And our true value is hidden in Jesus, the Son of God who died for us, who lives for us, and now we live for him. And we are adopted as a child of God. We're part of Team Jesus in his tribe, in his family. And every day is a day where I get to be Jesus, bring his mercy, love, and justice onto this planet and live a story bigger than just my own story. And I can know the peace, the shalom, the joy, 
the rest there is in knowing, loving, and worshipping Jesus. This is of true value, and nothing can take that away from me. So do you remember our original question? It was this. How can I es escape anxiety? And today we've said, well, anxiety is not this binary thing. You have it or you don't have it. But we should see mental fitness as a spectrum. And there are things that will fill our mental fitness tank, but there are also things we can do that will empty our mental fitness tank. My boys love playing Minecraft. But did you know there are two modes in Minecraft? There's survival mode, and survival mode is crazy. There are skeletons, there are killer bees, you can fall down holes, you can die. But then there's creative mode, where you're chilled, you're relaxed, you're in the moment, you're imagining, and you're creating beauty. What about us? Are we living in survival mode, or are we in creative mode, where we're chilled, present, in the moment, where our identity is in Christ, where I don't have to be perfect, I don't have to prove I'm perfect, because Jesus is perfect, Jesus accepts me just the way I am, and so now I've been set free to live a story bigger than just my own story. And now I can imagine and create beauty because my true value is hidden in Christ.